Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Uh, we're going through a little bit of a different kind of thing today uh, where we're looking at some Football Manager 23 content. A um, bit of a new thing for me, normally it's FIFA, but um, we're going to give this one a go as well. This series is all about the kind of what ifs. What if these certain scenarios happened uh, and how they would play out, which I think, um, I think should be really interesting. As usual, this kind of thing, um, if you do enjoy it, your your input tells me that you like this kind of thing so obviously views is a good thing but likes comments are the main things i want to i'd love to see from you guys um and obviously if you if you want to see some more of it then subscribe and um, and i will try and, and try and put some more stuff in if you've got any ideas as well about what kind of scenarios you'd like to see um then please stick them in the comments and um, i will try and fulfill those for you because uh, i think these are going to be really interesting so first things first then, let's explain the scenario we're going to be looking at then. This is a scenario I've wanted to do for a while now and basically it's uh, you get lists all over the internet now of the top wonder kids that you can sign in Football Manager 23. Um, most of them are normally around about the same but I've gone with a, a usual one. I want to give a big thank you here to FM Scout. Um, you can see him on Twitter. I'll, I'll link all the um, all his socials and all that kind of good stuff uh, in the description. But that uh, that site compiles a list of all the best um, players that you can look for, whether it's the kind of the bargain end or the, or the really expensive ones. Um, and the, and the, they're the kind of players that I'm looking at in this save. What I've done is I've put them all into one team because I want to see if a team of the absolute best prospects can do something pretty good. Um, we all remember that uh, that comment from Alan Hansen many, many years ago with, regarding Man United where he said, You can't win anything with kids. Well, we're going to try it out and we're going to test that theory and let's see if it happens. What I've done is I've taken a team in the Premier League. I didn't want to go for one of the top, top teams, uh, mainly because um, I, those those teams have already kind of... I want to see if they can push a lesser known team up to the next level, get them into the Champions League, that kind of thing. Um, so I've picked my team, Southampton, you know, um, as, as I should do, really. Uh, and I want to see if these guys can, can, really, can really push on. What I've done with Southampton as well is I've removed um, their ability to sign players. So I've put a transfer embargo on them. Um, I did do a test save of this, and unfortunately that also meant that they couldn't renew contracts. So after about four or five years, um, they started to absolutely tanking because they couldn't sign any players and they couldn't play the players, the Wonder Kids, anymore because they didn't have um, any work permits. So what I've done is I've extended all their contracts as well out to uh, 2037, which is where I'm going to take this save to and give it 15 years and we're going to kind of see how they progress if all of these players reach their potential um, and let's see how they get on. So as you can see I've signed a lot of good, uh, a lot of really good players here. Um, most of them have got five, four star potential um, and they should really, they should really push on and become quite a, quite a team really. There are a couple of players in there from Southampton already um, who were actually in those top lists. So you've got Tina, Tina Livramento here. Um, who's a, a real prospect and he's been at Saints now for about 18 months. Um, you've also got Bazanu, um, the goalkeeper. Again, he's a very good, very good prospect. But you've got, so I've got some kind of names on there that you recognise. Jude Bellingham, for example. Um, he's listed as one of the top attacking midfielders. So um, we, we're going to work with him. Uh, who else have we got? Ansu Fati, Pedri, Xavi, or Gavi, however you want to say it. I think it's Xavi. And then Ed, the, the one everybody seems to know is Endrick. Um, so yeah, so a lot of these players, I'm expecting them to, in this first kind of season, potentially just kind of stabilise because most of them are, you know, they're, they're under 21. They had to be under 21, so most of them are kind of 18, 19. Um, Maitland-Niles is in there. I couldn't, I, he wasn't showing up on the squad when I, when I loaded it up, but um, he, he's probably the only the only one because he's on loan for a season. Um, it, it, that might that might throw it off a little bit, but it'll be gone after one season. So, uh, and in all honesty, I can't be running this again because it's taken me absolutely forever to work through it. So let's see how they get on with the first season. Then I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, we pretty much know who we've got. Um, what I'll do is I'll go through uh, after the first season, see how they've got on, see who's kind of really sticking out. There's a few players that probably aren't going to play as much um, because I've picked a couple for each position. But um, let's see how they get on with this first season. So then we've uh, reached the uh, end of the first season. So let's see how these uh, how this Southampton team have got on. Um, 
I'm expect like as I said, I was expecting them to be kind of kind of mid table ish. Um, they, you know, there's a lot of good players there, but most of them have nowhere near reached all their potential. But uh, as you said, as you kind of go through the years, uh, I like to think that the more games they play, the, the better and better team they're going to become. So end of the first season, as as expected, I imagine they they finished sixteenth. Um, actually a fair decent bit of a distance away from um, Crystal Palace as you can see there who, on, who finished on 33 points Southampton got 40 points so um, yeah so a pretty good uh, end end of the season I suppose with uh, a bunch of youngsters and um, Maitland Niles in there as well I suppose interestingly enough uh, Jude Bellingham is the, is the captain um, which fair enough yeah he, he's probably he's the one, one of the few English lads in there but Saka's in there as well so I was expecting him to to be involved somewhere along the, those lines but um, but overall, overall, pretty good to see. Uh, Akoli's the um, the vice captain, and um, Masayala, who actually was at Southampton as a youngster, and we we let him go because he was never going to be anything good. That was a that was a bit of a mistake there. But he's our key player as well, so I'm expecting his name to be popping up in a fair few things. So let's have a look at this team then. Um, probably the thing that most people are going to be interested in is the values. I mean, we've got obviously already Masayala as our key player is valued at 66 to 77 million pounds, 20 years old, uh, followed closely by uh, Xavi, Kamavinga, Saka. I mean, he's done it. He's done it all already in it. But look at, I mean, if you look at this, a lot of these guys are already four star rated um, at a very young age. So expecting them to do, to rule things. Drew Bellingham is actually only, only down there, but again, 50 million probably um, is, is a reasonable shout for him. Um, Shell de Roop um, is a one I always hear lots of things about. People like to buy him. But most of these guys haven't actually featured that much. Um, there's a few on here. Makoko uh, featured fairly regularly and again scored 13 goals in the Premier League. So that's pretty good going. But um, it's been pretty much shared out. The, the, the appearances have been shared out quite nicely. However, a quick look at the uh, the results shows that goal scoring seems to have been the main problem for this team. Um, loads and loads of defeats against, uh, but but defensively not too bad. I mean, um, there's not any real thumpings there, which for a young team you'd expect potentially expect to see, but certainly not a lot of goals scored. And that kind of thing shows up as well in the in these uh, results. I mean, 28 goals scored, but only 41 conceded as well. So. Really solid defensively. I mean, there's not many teams. I mean, you'd have to go, what, or even Villa, who finished in sixth, have um, conceded 48 goals. So uh, in terms of goals goals conceding, really good. It's probably a, a very solid back line with Bazanu in the back there as well. Um, but scoring goals definitely seems to be the problem here. Whilst we're here as well, we'll have a quick look at um, some of the stats and see, see where our guys have, have featured. Uh, we've got nobody up in the top scorers understandably when we've only scored 28 goals across the whole thing um but say so Saka's doing well um Calibre Coley's there appearing in headers again de decent performance from our back line um there's we've got somebody in there pretty much in in every in every work in every bit so in terms of a first season I'm actually pretty pretty pleased with that there's a definitely a good good ground base work along there and I think that's something that we could um definitely push on with and we'll see how they get on in the next couple of seasons. So then, on to season number three. We are in uh, 1st of June 2025. Three seasons into this, uh, I'd expect to start seeing some some real uh, kind of pushing on. Benitez was actually in charge of the team. I've just jumped in myself so I can see all the stats and everything like that. But yeah, Rafa Benitez was in charge. Obviously, they got rid of Nathan Jones after a yeah fairly inauspicious start. Um, but, but let's see how Benitez has been getting on. There we go. They have made real improvements, um, adding 23 points to two seasons ago. Um, not many losses as well, so that's um, that's a really promising sign. They managed to get themselves into the conference uh, European League as well. Um, real improvements there, and it looked like it's developing into a really good team. In terms of, uh, they find looks like they finally started founding their shooting boots as well. 54 goals in 38 games, only 39 conceded. So defensively, still really strong. One of the uh, one of the better defensive teams in this in this league, but um, real improvements made. And obviously Benitez is starting to work his magic. Still working off those players because of the transfer embargo. They cannot sign anybody else, so um, he's having to make do with what he's got. And he's really start, obviously starting to develop those players into to quite a force. Whilst we're here, we'll, we'll have a quick look then at the uh, the stats. Um, no no tops. Nobody in the top scorers list. Um, 
Again, not not a huge amount of goals scored, but they're obviously sharing the goals around, um, which is good to see. Um, but again, plenty of defensive stats in there, plenty of good stuff. Bazin, who's kind of one of the better goalkeepers, um, pre- lots of um, possession, progressive passes, passes completed. Um, so they're obviously playing a decent decent brand of football as well. Um, but it's it's great to see that they're kind of slowly starting to come into their own. So. Uh, yeah, looking at these, looking at these players, um, they, you have to excuse these stats here. These these aren't actually correct. I'm just just uh, just having a quick look. So Masayala um, is actually made 36 appearances uh, in the Premier League, so not three, as that that thing's saying there. Um, scored 14 goals, so just off those kind of top scorer lists. But um, he's 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 proven to be quite a player. The season before that, 38 goals, 14 uh, sorry, 38 games, 14 goals. Uh, so it's pretty consistent, and um, he's doing pretty well. Let's also have a look at the uh, the season before that as well. So 11th they finished prior to that. So they've been going up very, very steadily. 16th, 11th, and now up into 8th, um, making real progress there. And um, in all honesty, I'd expect the next five years to see them really pushing for the kind of ch- trying to claim that top spot. There are some real standout players though. So Ansu Fati, I'm a big, big fan of his. Um, let's see how he's been getting on. Uh, yeah, so, so pretty much a seven across the board, uh, 7.16 or the season before that. So not a huge amount. I was expecting to maybe create some, a few more chances than that, but um, certainly not a bad player. Somebody like Jude Bellingham, you'd expect to be um, to perform pretty well. He was performing well for Bruce Dortmund before he even came to us, but he's been hovering around just below the seven mark. He's, it's a bit of a different prospect playing in the Premier League compared to the uh, Bundesliga. More just for the physic, pure physicality of it, really, and the speed that they play at. So, um, pretty good, pretty good going around. And I think if this is much more of a collective team. Um, no real standout star players, even though they're all stars in their own right, I suppose. And you can see from the uh, from the fixture list that they've had, there's been a lot more goals scored for one, um, but also there's we ha- there's not been that kind of run of reds of bad results um you know they've had good results away against uh, man city only you know only losing 2-1 playing pretty well there by the looks of things beating everton they're starting to beat those teams that they should be beating um and then probably the top six which is where they come across uh, you know kind of come under any kind of real defeats um got to the carabao cup um semi-finals so pretty good going there uh, got knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup against Leicester. So no trophies yet, um, but into the like Europa Conference League, um, and maybe now that they've got the kind of all of the players are starting to real kind of work their way through, that they might be able to start rotating a little bit more um, and getting some uh, getting some silverware. So then let's have a look at that. And we are five seasons into this save now um, and things have changed again, strangely enough. Uh, Marcelino was uh, the guy who was in charge of Southampton. Um, he, how long was he at the Saints for? He, well, not long at all. So it looks like he's just actually come into charge. So it'd be interesting to see how they've got on because obviously Benitez, unless he's just moved on somewhere. Um, let's have a quick look and see. Ah. He's taken over as England manager. Hmm. <laughs> Bit of a poison chalice there. I'm not sure I would have made that move. But, I, I mean, I guess you can understand it. But it, So he's obviously done well. He's obviously done well. So that, that that's um, hopefully going to show you good signs. So let's see how Southampton have got on another two seasons into this as these players have started to grow. So another twist in this story. They have fallen down quite considerably, actually, down to 16th spot at the end of season number five. Um, maybe that's why Benitez jumped ship, I guess. You know, he's he's obviously um, had a bit of a rocky period. Marcelino's come in at some point um, and it's not gone so well this season. Um, let's have a look at the full table. Yes, well off the pace there, well off the pace. Actually, we've been replaced by Fulham in that eighth spot. Um, but we'll have a quick look at the season before. Uh, they did well. They got up to the uh, seventh spot. So they've really had a big falling off. Uh, although not a huge points, uh, points tally. They're 53 points compared to 63 the season before where they only got into eighth. So obviously the standard of the league has been considerably lower uh, this year. Um, but yeah, let's, let's see. have a quick look at the players and uh, see how they've got on. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's some good players there, isn't there? Yeah, uh, Saka's now a five-star player. 
Uh, obviously, this is all uh, in comparison to the the other players in that team. But there's some absolute standout players there. Um, we've got you know your 98 million, 97 million. There's a couple of what's that five, four, five players that are in the kind of 80 to 90 million pound range. Um, there's some real good quality there. However, I will say that further down the list, um, the guys that aren't getting as many games, like Sh Shellerup, um how many games has he played? Yeah, he's not playing many games, and most of those are from the subs bench. In fact, almost all of them are from the sub bench. It shows how quickly the uh, potential will drop uh, when, they're, when they're not getting game time. And obviously, I can't send them on loan or anything like this. Um, oh, sorry, the manager can't send them on loan. Um, Endrick, wow, he's still only a two star rated, still, still five star potential though. Um, he's out of contract, that would be why. Why is he out of contract? That was a bit of a mistake. There's obviously a few of these that I have not managed to get them extended. In fact, yeah, he's the only one for some reason, typical the one player I wanted to play well. Um, that's a bit annoying. But anyway, he, he hasn't um, obviously been playing. So he's he's out of the game now, unfortunately, with this one, which is a real shame because I would have loved to see how Hendrik got on. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll address that in another video um, where I might do a similar thing, but slightly different movements on it. Looking at performances then, um, they've actually played reasonably well against some of the bigger teams. Um, just right at the end there as well they've really fallen apart but they got into wow this is this season they got into the Europa League final um, from finishing seventh the season before losing out to Bayer Leverkusen so there's definitely the, the start of something good there I think I think they, they are really starting to push on let's see the season before when they were in the Europa Conference League uh, they got to the final and they won they won the final so 3-0 against Leverkusen again <laughs> So um, Leverkusen got their own back the season after, but there's some trophies there as well, which is really great to see. Um, in terms of FA Cup, they got knocked out by Man United in the FA Cup fifth round. And the League Cup, let's see, sorry, the Carabao Cup. Uh, wow, they got knocked out by Watford uh, here. So not great not great for the domestic cups, but a, but a European trophy for Southampton, which if you know anything about Southampton is unusual. <laughs> in fact, never happened. Still not making loads of inroads on the um, the you know, kind of best players, all this kind of stuff. Um, but I, I think it's more of a collective thing here. I think they definitely. I mean, you can see here straight away, fewest conceded. Two of our players are in that um, are on that list there for fewest conceded. So defensively, still really solid. Um, just we seem to be so, they seem to be so on and off, on and off. But the problem is, they, it looks like they lost their manager and they've just just fallen apart. So we're back then, it's 2032, we are 10 seasons into this save uh, and Marcellino was still in charge. Um, so I'm guessing he's been doing all right. Um, I've, I've obviously just kicked him out because I'm taking over, but um, that's five years uh, at the helm, which is absolutely unknown for, for a Southampton team. Um, but I'm assuming then that he's made some, some decent progress because it'll be uh, interesting to see how he's got on. There we go. Southampton have won the Premier League. 86 points, uh, 27 wins, five draws, six losses. Um, wasn't expecting that, I must admit. I expected them to be pushing the Champions League, but I was expecting City to be just kind of rattling through all of the all of this, especially with Haaland still playing for them. But um, Musiala there, top goal scorer as well. Saka with the best average rating. Um, Saka as well with the most player of the matches. That is a real turn up for the books. I'm really surprised by that. So they've kept on that amazing uh, defensive record, 38 goals conceded. I mean, there's a couple of teams better than that, Man City, but it's the goals for that's really, really made a big difference here. 86 goals for in the uh, in the league, well above anybody else. Um, and that's mainly from Masiala, uh, I'm assuming. Um, but let's have, a, let's have a little look through and see how they've done over the last couple of seasons before this. So the season before uh, this one, they finished in sixth. So got, champ got Champions League. That's six teams in the Champions League. Um, that's quite incredible. That really, it's uh, the 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 English are taking over European competitions. Uh, the season before that, they won uh, by a point from Man City. So that's two. 
uh, Premier League successes and seventh uh, prior to that as well. And what have we got here? And a third. So been in and around the European spots. Um, the one before that is the one that we, we were just looking at. So Marcelino came in, completely turned things around and um, some fantastic results there. Really good results. I'd love to see exactly how they've gotten in all the other um, European competitions and domestic competitions as well. So this was the first season after uh, the one we looked at after season five. So this is season six. Um, they did pretty good. Got into the FA Cup quarterfinals. Got into the Carabao Cup. Won the Carabao Cup against uh, Everton uh, with Pedri and Masiala. But look at this. Loads more goals scored. This, this is really looking good now. Uh, FA Cup third round. Be cut. Oh, there you go. Got their own back on Cardiff after the last, last debacle. Then Rotherham. Then Leicester. And then got knocked out on penalties against Leeds um, but they didn't have to didn't have European competition to uh, to worry about in this one so you'd expect them to kind of really push on in the domestic cups the season after that then we have got what have we got here Champions League so this is the first season in the Champions League they got through to the knockout phases uh, they got through to the round of 16 and got knocked out by City so no, no real uh, drastic thing there I must admit um, soundly beaten actually 4-1 on aggregate there um, against City but that's no that's no surprise that's no surprise disappointing FA Cup third round replay uh, loss against Brighton um, and where have we got here with the Carabao Cup ah oh, they got knocked out a Leeds again wow Leeds are proven to be a little bit of the bogey team so no, no trophies won there um, in terms of the Cups the next season then this is when they this is where the Europa Conference League uh, so they were back down in that again, got into the quarterfinals and um, got knocked out by Atletico. Uh, yeah, look at that, a one 0 loss away and then a one all draw at home. A little bit better, looking like we got some better, um, uh, some better results here. Good win against Milan, Inter as well. well I got played Inter and AC Milan in one, in one uh, swoop there. Um, oh look, here we go, lots of stuff there. So we got beat Man United in the Carabao Cup final. Uh, FA Cup, they managed to get it to the final. Lost against Man City on penalties again. And the Champions League semi-finals this time. Losing out to Liverpool. Um, in fact, getting thumped by Liverpool 3-0 in both legs as well. And Same. where are we here? So let's have a look at Champions League first. Again, knocked out Chelsea this time. Two 1-0 losses against Chelsea. It's, just, it's the English teams. They get, get knocked out by the English teams. FA Cup semi-final. Lost against Chelsea again. Wow, Chelsea have um, really put them put them to the sword in this one, and we have no uh, no real progression in the Carabao Cup yet. Getting losing to Swansea. Wow, we got yeah Masala without doubt the best player. Camavingas uh, really pulling it through as well. They're, they're creeping up there, aren't they? Um, it's amazing, isn't it? Some of these younger players, some of these uh, English players, Bazanu. He's a four and a half star rated player, I think, at the start start of all this. He's dropped right down, not getting any games. Uh, Lavia again not getting many games although still still valued well I've just uh, seen this this is very confusing Southampton have moved stadiums we are now in the Michael Owen Park um, as far as I'm aware Michael Owen never played for Southampton pretty sure of that um, not entirely sure we've named why we've named our stadium after him but hey you know <laughs> Each to their own. So then we are into 2037, 15 seasons into this save. And the first thing I've noticed is um, Guardiola's in charge of Southampton. Um, so that's a bit of a turn up for the books. Let's see when he got, um, when he came in. He came in in 2034, so shortly after we've uh, closed that save off. He was at Juventus uh, after doing a spell with Spain as well. Um, obviously Man City prior to that. So let's see how uh, Marcellino got on and so he must have joined in he must have left sorry in 2034 so Marcelino he actually retired um so he stayed with Saints all the way through uh and at 70 whatever he was 68 or years old or so he retired uh, and that's why Guardiola got in charge uh, he looks like he's done a pretty good job um and let's see actually how well he got on for the rest of it so this explains the Michael Owen debacle stadium thing going on here it looks like they moved into a temporary stadium 
um, because they're now back at St. Mary's. It must have been while it was being expanded uh, up from 32,000 to 47,000. Uh, that explains the things a little bit more. So it's another, it's a sixth place finished for Southampton this season. Like I said, they, they are getting a little bit older, these players, and we still can't replace them um, because they're on a transfer embargo. Um, so it's not a surprise that they're starting to drop off a little bit, um, but still, still performing okay. That you know, it's another, it's another season of European football coming up for them. So just having a quick look then at uh, where they finished in the f the four seasons previous. Uh, there was a fifth spot finish, which was Champions League again. Um, we've got a third, a third, and a fourth. So pretty much Champions League all the way through, although no wins. Um, but Man United have made their way back up again, so that's, that's a surprise. So in terms of squads then, we're starting to see um, some of the youth players coming through the system from Southampton's academy starting to take over. You know, say Musayala's 34, we've got Xavi is 32, uh, Tell's 32, Fatty's 34, so they're all getting a little bit older. Bellingham's 33. Um, so it's no surprise. It's, it's no surprise that the, these other players are starting to come in, although there's still some fantastic players there. I mean, let's see how many goals Masala got this season. Oh, only, only the nine this time, but he's been consistently getting kind of high teens, low 20s right through his career at Southampton. We're going to have a quick look now and see if there is that one elusive Champions League trophy. Let's see if they manage to win it with this absolute golden generation. Uh, and it's not there. In fact, there's nothing. One more Carabao Cup there. Uh, that's pretty much it. No more FA Cups. No more Premier Divisions. Premier Leagues. Um, a little bit disappointing, actually, I must say. Only the one Conference League title as well. Um, so... With a team of absolute worldly wonder kids, it maybe it is just a bit too much. They all came into their prime at the same time as well. Um, yeah, it's just not not worked out for them, which is a, which is a real shame and a real surprise. I'm surprised, I must admit. So that brings to the, to the end this uh, this experiment that we did today with uh, this team full of wonder kids. Um, some fantastic players there, and I'm sure with that, you know, a little bit of more experience maybe blended in there as well. Um, maybe with Endrick, if he actually managed to get on the pitch, um, they would have done really well. Uh, I would have loved to have seen them win a, um, a Champions League title, but it wasn't to be. It wasn't going to happen. Um, but it's a massive change from where Southampton are normally. So it shows that if you put these, this kind of quality of players in, uh, they, they stand a really good chance of doing some, some really good things. If you did enjoy this one, it's a little bit different to my usual content. I say normally I'm making FIFA videos, um, but I've, I've really enjoyed making this one and I, and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you do want to see other types of things like this, then please throw some suggestions in the comments. I'd love to hear what your kind of ideas are, what you'd like to see. I've got a few ideas myself, so there will be a few more videos like this kind of thing. But um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, um, like the video, uh, the comments all that good stuff. I would love to get myself up over 200 subscribers pretty soon. Um, it would really kind of start to kind of pick my uh, pick my channel up and, and hopefully move on through this 2023. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.